Good afternoon, fellow iStaters. This is Paul Gordon of iState.tv, and this is your daily dose of headlines you may have missed for Monday, February 5th, 2018. You give us 20 minutes, and we'll give you headlines that aren't dominated with fear porn. We'll give you headlines of awareness, hope, action, and yeah... Maybe a little lulls. So today's show is titled, India Discovery Could Bust Out of Africa Theory. And you can get the show notes at isheadlines.com. On this show, we're going to be looking at India's discovery, stone, excuse me, India's stone tool conundrum, credit card crypto crap, laser archaeology, Russian jet doomed, and more. And now, ladies and gentlemen, these are your headlines you may have missed. Discovery of stone tools in India disrupts out of Africa theory. Well, maybe. So archaeologists discover stone tools in India that date to 385,000 years old. Some of you that know anything about uh, human prehistory already see a problem with that date. So this find creates significant challenges to either the timing of when advanced hominids exited Africa, Africa? <laughs> and arrived in India, or it suggests early humans were more advanced than people thought. And this is from MorningTicker.com. A huge find in India may have tremendous implications as far as our understanding of mankind's migration out of Africa. And it certainly challenges prevailing theories in the scientific community. Scientists found stone tools that were dated to about 385,000 years ago in the Tamil Nadu region of India. You know, you know where that's at. I think we all do. Maybe not. That is a big deal because current scientific consensus holds that modern humans brought these tools to India less than 140,000 years ago. See, 385,000 years, that would be more, like double. More than double. Almost triple. Well, not quite triple, but almost. The tools were found at Atarampakam, a site near a stream of the... Cortaliar River, where scientists were able to find lots of stone tools from various settlements, perhaps stretching back to colonies of apes that lived there 1.7 million years ago. And if confirmed, it would mean either that humans in India developed stone tools on their own without the help of a more advanced group of hominin, hom hominin, hominins migrating out of Africa, or that those early humans migrated out of Africa far earlier than we realize. And uh, if you look on the uh, show image there, if you're not listening to the audio and you're watching either the YouTube or Facebook version, those are what the stone tools look like, and they, they clearly look like stone tools. I'll just say that. Not that I'm an expert, but they seem to clearly look like stone tools. Oh, you know what? I switched and uh, screwed up my 20-minute timer, so you might end up with a little extra time. You may end up with a little extra time this time, or not. Major credit cards blocking buying cryptocurrencies. So if you can't beat them, <laughs> join them. No, 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 no. Ban them. That's right. Ban them. So I guess, in a way, banning them is still attempting to try to beat them. But I mean beat them. How about if I clarify? If you can't beat them in the fair market kind of way, you go ahead and ban them. And that's what it appears the major banks are saying regarding cryptocurrency. They've moved to block their credit card customers from using their cards to purchase cryptocurrencies. I'm just betting that if there's maybe less than major credit card company out there, I don't know, uh, that uh, maybe maybe somebody will emerge and say, hey, no, 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 man, I got you covered. 
I take care of you. I let you use this credit card to purchase your cryptocurrencies. This is from Fortune.com. Most major U.S. credit card issuers have now banned the use of their cards to buy Bitcoin or other digital currencies in a move intended to decrease both financial and legal risk. Bank of America began blocking cryptocurrency purchases on Friday, according to Bloomberg. And J.P. Morgan did the same on Saturday. And I'm referring to this past Friday and this past Saturday. Citigroup also says it is halting cryptocurrency purchases on credit. And Capital One and Discover had already acted their own bans. This means all of the top five credit card issuers have announced or implemented bans. So that's... That's what you do, folks. You know, when you when you can't compete with the cryptos, you try to ban the cryptos. Now, this is not a free market, uh, strictly speaking, a free market response from uh, businesses in, in competition with another uh, type of service that could it could could eat or eat into their turf, because. In order for you to start your own credit card company, yeah, you're going to have to jump through a whole lot of regulation hoops that in large part have been written by these same top five credit card issuers. <laughs> so they're still using the state. They're using state guns to try to cut off competition. That's, that's a great American way, you know, capitalism. Lasers uncover thousands of ancient Maya homes palaces. So two of our top three stories are are actually archaeological in nature. Thanks to lasers, archaeologists may have to rewrite the books on the Mayan civilization. And this is from the New York Times. So uh, reading from the New York Times, not far from the sites tourists already know, like the towering temples of the ancient city of Tikal, laser technology has uncovered about 60,000 homes, palaces, tombs, and even highways in the humid lowlands. The findings suggested an ancient society of such density and interconnectedness that even the most experienced archaeologists were surprised. And here comes a quote from, obviously, one of the experienced archaeologists. In this case, it's Thomas Garrison, a National Geographic explorer and an archaeologist at Ithaca College. And he says, and I quote, Everywhere that we looked, there were more settlements there was more settlements than we expected. We knew there was going to be more, but the scale of it really blew our minds. Researchers found the structures by shooting lasers down from planes to pierce the thick foliage and paint a 3D picture of the ground below. The technology is called light detection and ranging, or LIDAR, and you can bet that LIDAR is going to be deployed a lot more, and one wonders what else might be discovered in the coming months and years as we may end up having to rewrite our prehistory books and change our very understanding of the evolution of human society. Anti-Assad forces shoot down Russian jet, kill pilot. And this is this is part of the focus that I have looking at uh, Rahava. And right now, part of Rahava, uh, Afrin, is being invaded by Turkey. So that's how, well, you'll see how this story is related. While Turkey proceeds to advance on Afrin, with the aid of anti-Assad forces, that's the key point here, other anti-Assad forces are busy shooting down Russian jets and killing their pilots. And this happened just this, this past week with the group that claimed responsibility, Hayat al-Tahrir al-Sham, 
sharing the video of the jet being shot down as well as video of the wreckage site. And this action is sure to further complicate Russia's complicity in allowing Turkey to invade Afrin while using fighters from the same type of groups as Hayat at Tahrir al Sham. I don't know if I said that or not. Let's see if we can see this video here or not. I'm going to click on this video. And if you're listening to the audio, well, what 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 the video essentially shows it it shows a jet in the sky if i can get it to play here i'm not sure that it will play and i'm going to give up pretty quickly if it doesn't play it shows a jet screeching through the sky and now they're going to show me a commercial all right well the video is embedded in the article so if you go to isheadlines.com you can get access to the article that has the video embedded if you go to the show notes for today for February 5th. So this is from mirror.co.uk. Syrian rebels shoot down a Russian jet and killed the pilot after he ejected, safely landed on the ground, and shot at them while resisting capture. Probably a good move. You probably would rather die right then and there than, than be uh, taken captive by by the, these gooner thugs. Gooner thugs. I like it. I'm going to try to... I don't know if I remember that or not, but if I remember that phrase, I'm going to use Gooner Thugs more often. Dramatic video clips posted online, which I tried to show you, but, uh, you know, they tried to show me an ad instead, so screw their ad. Dramatic video clips posted online show the warplane being shot out of the sky, apparently with a portable surface-to-air missile, before crashing in a huge fireball. The Su-25's pilot parachuted to the ground in territory controlled by Al-Qaeda-linked militants. And I really wonder why they're writing Al-Qaeda-linked militants. I think it's more important to, 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 to call them anti-Assad forces. And if you remember or if you recall, Russia is kind of pro-Assad. And Russia and Turkey and Iran... They have this weird alliance regarding how they're going to approach Syria. But, well, there's some stickiness to that whole alliance because Turkey is relying on these anti-Assad forces to aid with them in the invasion of Afrin. And meanwhile, these same types of anti-Assad forces are shooting down Russian jets. You see the problem. So the jihadists, I already told you that it was Hayat al uh, at Hayat Tahir al Sham, which uh, claimed responsibility for the down plane. Illinois Supreme Court strikes down anti gun park law. So the Illinois Supreme Court decided to offer a longer leash to the citizens, I put that in quotes by the way, when it ruled that a state law banning firearms within 1,000 feet of a public park could not stand. Thank you for your benevolence, black-robed lords. I really, I really love it when the black-robed lo lords, robed lords, uh, deign to grace us with longer leashes. I think it's moving. I think it's, uh, it's a tribute to their benevolence, and and we should all just stand up and applaud. So this is from the Daily Cal Caller. The Illinois Supreme Court rejected a state ban on possessing a firearm within 1,000 feet of a public park Thursday and said parks do not, and this is this, this past Thursday, and this show is being recorded February 5th, 2018. Ten minutes. Do math. I, don't, I don't want to. Said parks do not fall under the scope of, quote, sensitive places, unquote. The state argued possessing a firearm near public parks should be legal, illegal, under the District of Columbia v. Heller Supreme Court decision, Heller established certain areas as gun-free zones, and the state believed parks should be included in that category. The Illinois Supreme Court disagreed and struck down the ban. The court said the ban would limit self-defense and failed to take law abiding. A law abiding. There's that phrase. That law abiding. Want to be a? Want to be a? A law-abiding citizen. That's what. You, that's what you got to be. Of course, if you if you actually read all of the laws that are on the books, you might ask yourself, Do you really want to be a law-abiding citizen? But that's that's another matter. This is headlines you may have missed. I don't have time to go into that long philosophical quandary. Turkey's Afrin invasion torpedoes Sochi conference, and I was 
kind of hinting at this in the earlier story about the plane being shot down by anti-Assad forces, the, the Russian jet being shut down. The invasion of Afrin pretty much undermined any hope that the Sochi conference on Syria would get the kind of results that either Putin or and Erdogan of Russia and Turkey respectively hoped to see happen ahead of their elections. And a, and a quick backstory here, they're both facing re-election. There's no doubt that they're going to win re-election, but they would really like, they would like to cheat the least possible <laughs> and they would like to have like overwhelming support it's it's good it's placates people it reinforces the ideational influence that uh everybody everybody loves the leader and so why aren't you on board with loving the leader and uh it's one of the reasons that russia decided okay we're gonna kind of let turkey go ahead and invade afrin because you know we want to make nice with turkey because if we do then we got a good chance to to write a nice peace process plan here that would that would that would give us the power before the election to say see we came we saw we conquered we did good we accomplished our goal everything is great and the same thing for Erdogan he 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 wanted the same thing uh but I, I and you know I, I I don't know what Afrin is for him it's a you know I'm I'm military and and, and I'll tell you the the Turkish people seem to overwhelmingly support this uh military invasion of 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 the people of Afrin which are really the Rahavans the uh, uh, Syrian Kurds so this is from Al Monitor and this is a uh, I th I, th I I believe this is kind of Turkish leading publication so the meeting of the Syrian National Dialogue Conference in Sochi recently was a victim of Turkey's military invasion. Maybe not so much uh, of Turkey's military invasion of northern Syria, which has now entered its second week. More than 1,500 Syrian delegates attended the Russian-hosted all-Syrian dialogue in Sochi, which included unusual crosstalk between representatives of the government and those from groups outside the government. Despite the unwieldy proceedings and inconclusive results, the scale and scope of the discuss discussions cannot easily be dismissed. Actually, you can't because of this next sentence, or this next part of this sentence. Despite the absence of key opposition groups and the failure of the meeting to ramp down the recent uptick in fighting. So while the boycott of the mainstream opposition high negotiation committee was expected, the absence of any Syrian Kurdish parties also meant that Turkey's military operation against the People's Protection Units, the YPG, was not on the conference agenda. Farage pushes Ireland to I Irexit the EU. Yes, I, I created that, Irexit. I'm sure others, others have said it, but I haven't seen it. So since I didn't see it, I created it. Somebody probably did it like three years ago. Nigel Farage is pushing for Ireland to follow Britain out of the EU orbit, and the Irish globalists do not like it one bit. Ahead of his scheduled talk at famed Trinity College in Dublin, Farage is being called a disseminator of, quote, false information, unquote. Oh, those globalist lovers who seem to value being ruled by Brussels over being self-sovereign. They're, they're even scheduling protests during Farage's speech. We want more distant leadership. We want more distant leadership. That's, that's what they should be saying. Uh, as many of you probably already know, the idea of secession is obviously one I always favor. Five watching minutes. the Irish globalists lose their ever-loving minds, of course, is just a wonderful treat. And I'll let you go to... His headlines.com. I have the link to the show notes also in the uh, Facebook description and the YouTube descriptions if you can read the excerpt from yourself for yourself from Bloomberg. Baltimore's cop only drug gang, bigger than first thought. So the Baltimore police gun trask. Well, I, you know, I actually rehearsed this saying this, trying to say this smoothly. The Baltimore police gun tap. I can't do it. The Baltimore Police Gun Trace Task Force turned violent drug gang might be bigger than first thought. More witnesses are coming forward to relate stories of the illicit activities of this cop-only drug gang. And this is from the Baltimore Sun. The alleged victims were brought together by defense attorney Ivan Bates, who is running for Baltimore State's attorney against Marilyn J. Mosby. Ah, political stunt. But you know what? 
Sometimes political stunts have some benefits. Bates said he has, I can't believe I said that sentence. Bates said he has represented about 20 people who were arrested by Jenkins, including Jenkins is one of the accused of the uh, the Baltimore Police Gun Trace Task Force turned violent drug, de- drug gang, uh, including two who have testified at the federal racketeering trial of two gun trace task force officers that continue next week. I would love to see that TV show. And now, this week on Gun Trace Task Force. The Gun Trace Task Force turns into a violent drug gang. Jenkins has pleaded guilty to committing several robberies and providing stolen drugs to an associate to resell. He is one of six officers to plead guilty in the case. Blah, blah, blah. Lovely story. Really, really lovely story. Fembots are coming! Fembots are coming! And now this is kind of your your moment of lulls right here. So, are we sexualizing our robots? And is the preponderance of feminized bots proof that we not only sexualize our robots, but that females are the most sexualized of the two biological genders? Signs point to maybe? So this is from the New York Times, The Rise of the Social Media Fembot. The fembot has long been a pop culture fixation, but now feminized tech is all around us. Digital help meets like Apple's Siri, she's totally hot. Amazon's Alexa, totally, totally smash or pass, I'll ask you. And Microsoft's Cortana, mm, Cortana, are fitted with non-threatening feminine voices and programmed to respond to sexist comments <laughs> with cutesy reportee. If you tell Siri to make you a sandwich, she replies, Two minutes. I, can't. I have no condiments. Well, you should say sandwich and not sandwich. You probably get a better response. The women react to sandwich. They're like, it's like automated. I'm just kidding. Please don't share this episode with my wife. I want to live. Creepy techno Pygmalion stories like the one about the guy who 3D printed his own Scarlett Johansson bot on his patio. Nothing wrong with that. Well, <laughs> maybe. Captivate the online newscape. Blah, blah, blah. Okay, well, you get the, the, the general gist of the article there and uh, go to our show notes to, to read more there. That's your moment of lulls. Here's our last story. We'll get this in real quick. New single piston engines could make combustible engines great again. Is the combustible engine dead? The European Union and other nations have decided to artificially force the death of the combustible engine by outlawing new cars with combustible engines by the year 2040. But are they being too hasty? Do combustible engines One have minute. room for improvement? One such engine may offer significantly less gas emissions, significantly less moving parts, way less, and still offer the same power. That engine is called the Aquarius engine. It is being developed by a small company in Israel. I have a video of uh, one of the representatives talking on uh, some European news show, I think. And there is an excerpt from an article in... Jean Huant about the engine if you want to learn more. 30 seconds. We don't have time to learn more. We have time to just read real quickly some of the headlines that we didn't get to, even though we actually, this was longer than 20 minutes because of my error. Sea Hunter, a drone ship with no crew, just joined the U.S. Navy fleet. Oregon anti-gun push already underway as legislature convenes. Next Ten week, seconds. Cryptocurrency ads disappear from Chinese social media. Facebook boss reveals she has incurable cancer. Our virtual reality church is the wave of the future. Deep fakes will create Hollywood's next sex tape sketch. Yes, you heard the beep. So I think you know what that means. When you hear the beep, what you know is that the show is over. And that's what I say. That's all we have today for headlines you may have missed. If you would like to read more about the stories we covered today, just go to isheadlines.com, and you can also find a link directly to the show notes in the description for the Facebook post as well as the YouTube post. And if you're listening to audio, you're probably already on the page. So you can... There's your show notes. Uh, And you can find the show notes for February 5th, 2018. As always, remember, those who need to control thoughts need to control news. Until tomorrow at 12.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, this is Paul Gordon of iState.tv saying, 
Have a great rest of your day, fellow I-Staters.